Thank you, Stefan. Uh, good afternoon, I guess it is. Good afternoon. Uh, yes, I just uh, briefed the Council on the situation in Sudan. You know, we have had uh, exciting weeks uh, in the country, um, the most intensive, most dangerous crisis which the country has seen in the transition period or since the beginning of the transition period in the summer of 2019. Uh, this included a military takeover on 25 October, followed by intensive, actually ongoing protests in the street, a number of mediation efforts mainly by domestic actors, which we as UNITAMS try to facilitate and coordinate with as far as possible, and an agreement four weeks later to release the Prime Minister from house arrest and allow him to resume his functions. Um, this agreement of 21 November has not ended the crisis. It is basically a way station on what hopefully could be a way back to constitutional order. I have uh, cautiously welcomed that statement because I did see it as a way to avoid further bloodshed in the country and indeed as a possible step towards dialogue between all stakeholders in Sudan and a way to return to constitutional order and the transitional path towards democracy. I do realize and I do appreciate that a substantial part of the political forces in the country do reject this agreement between the Prime Minister and the uh, head of the Sovereignty Council, General Borja, for different reasons mainly because they fear that it would enshrine the control of the military over the civilian government. And my response to the criticism is, I mean, aside of saying that criticism is legitimate and should be legitimate, and let's talk about how we see the situation, is that what now is needed are confidence-building measures to convince particularly the domestic public that Sudan is actually on a way back to transitional, to the transitional uh, path towards democracy and towards constitutional order. This also means that the 21 November agreement is a step that needs to be followed by other steps, um, including credible investigation of the killings that happened in the four weeks after 25 October and a real dialogue about the issues that have divided the Sudanese before 25 October and after, and the full freedom for the Prime Minister to form his government without undue interventions. Um, it's still a challenging period. The crisis is not over. Uh, enormous political recriminations ongoing conflicts, but what I also see is that we are back to talking about ways out of the crisis. Most of the, the largest numbers, the large number of the detainees have been released and different political forces come together in different formats to speak about the future and the way out of the crisis. And of course, we as UNITAMS are there to support the search for credible and sustainable ways out of the crisis and back to a democratic transition path. I think I end here and I'm open for your questions. Uh, hi, uh, good to see you in person. Ibtisam Azim from Al Arab Al Jadid newspaper. Uh, I have uh, first, um, you know, many Sudanese are afraid that the military will. Uh, continue its control through elections. Is there anything in the current agreement or other agreements that uh, will guarantee that no military, whether Mr. Burhan or others, uh, would uh, be uh, 
uh, candidates uh, in the elections or they will try to control, continue to control the country through elections. And then the other question is, uh, w what are the next steps that you think it's necessary to take uh, immediately to gain the uh, confidence of the street? Thank you. Right. I, I accept that some Sudanese fear that elections would be another way for military people to stand as candidate and control the process, but I would I would respond that why I respect these fears, if you don't have elections, there's a risk that unelected people controlling the future is much greater, including the military, of course. So elections are indeed a way out. There are a lot of technical and partly political questions as to when and how elections should be held. And it is exactly um, here where the answer to your second question lies. We do need credible elections. We need, do need a conducive atmosphere for free and fair and credible elections. And it is rather clear, I mean, that's not the first time that a post-conflict country holds elections. It's rather clear what we need. And these are the next steps uh, after the prime minister forming an independent government. Uh, of course, we do need a independent electoral commission. We do need a good and credible election law. We do need a party's law that is not too restrictive on political forces and movements who want to organize themselves. We ne do need the return of press freedom, which is not yet restored. We need a lifting of the emergency status if you want to have parties and movements organize themselves and uh, compete freely in an open political space. I usually put that together and say what we do need is a restoration of political space, which is severely curtailed right now uh, after the 25 October coup, uh, and, uh, and even now uh, it is not yet back and fully opened. We still have restrictions on media freedom, um, and I think these are indicators which the Sudanese public will look at, uh, and if uh, the authorities um, accept to, to, to reopen this political space, this could actually also be a confidence-building measure between the authorities and the people. Nabil. Thank you. <coughs> Nabil Abi Saab, Al Arabi TV. Uh, the representative of Sudan um, urged the council to lift sanctions, uh, but in the same time, some other, uh, some members in the council still consider that this is something to be decided. Uh, what do you think about the sanctions uh, on Sudan? How significant is the impact of uh, the sanctions? And how urgent do you think uh, the sanctions issue should be addressed by the Council? Look, this is uh, one of the questions outside my mandate, uh, which I get every time when I'm, when I'm here. So I will try to avoid it uh, as much as I did in the, in the past and just say that the sanctions under 1591 which have been imposed on Sudan in the early 2000s did have a background at that time which is no longer available today. We are in a different situation. So what I am concentrating about without taking issue with the sanctions issue uh, as such, that Security Council measure is let us help the Sudan to build its own capacities to protect civilians in Darfur and in other regions. Thank you, Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.